Hey you doing everyone, welcome to this episode of 8 Bits in the Basement. So today I am genuinely excited because what I've done is yesterday evening I managed to finish the AY soundboard with this from a little Leningrad Spectrum clone. Now for those of you who have been following the channel for a while you will know that at the end of last year I made two videos about this system. The first video was where I kind of went over the bits that were inside it and explained what it was and where it came from. And the second video, a little bit about how it worked and what it could do. Now, at the end of the second video, I said there were a number of upgrades that could be quite easily performed on it. One of those was the AY soundboard that I've finished making yesterday evening. There's another one that I plan to do in the future if I don't blow it up today. And that is the 128 kilobyte memory upgrade. And there's also, if I get that far along or if I can, uh, this controller that can be made for it also. But, uh, yeah, before I go any further on that though, I'd just like to say that these episodes that I made were very, very popular on this channel. And I got an awful lot of comments on them, but it turns out I made one or two little errors that I'd like to correct. So number one, I said that this system came from Russia. As it turns out, it didn't. It came from the Soviet Union. And uh, it's a Soviet Spectrum clone, not a Russian Spectrum clone. Number two, Sergei Zanov is the guy who created this, this clone. And um, I said that it was known as the Zanofsky variant. No, Zanofsky is another name altogether, it seems. So it was known as the Zanoff variant. So there you go, there are two of the mistakes I made. I stand corrected. So what we'll do is, we'll slip in around, have a look um, at this AY soundboard, finish up the little bits and pieces that need to be done on it, and we'll put it into the Leningrad and see does it work or not. So let's get to it. quite productive over the last few weekends and um, this guy here is the sum total of about nine hours of work over the space of three Saturday evenings and uh, this is my little sound module so it looks fairly simple but there's an awful lot of little connections on the back of it but basically what happens is you open up your spectrum you take out the Z80 you plug this guy here into where the Z80 used to be you plug your Z80 in here your AY sound chip in here and these guys here have a couple of little uh, 74 series logic chips that will plug in there and they're blue logic really to allow these two guys the processor and the AY chip to speak together and if everything is working the way it should you will get sound out through this little um, headphone jack or speaker jack and that's basically that's basically the way it should work. It's supposed to be plug and play if it's built correctly. So all that remains to be done now really is to trim this board down and I'll put a piece of cardboard around the back here so that it can't cause any shorts or anything uh, when it's plugged into the Leningrad. And we'll see, does it work or not? So that's, that's the little board. So I'll get to trim in that. So in order to trim one of these boards, we don't want to snip any cables or anything, but all you need is a fairly decent pair of scissors and we should be able to trim just like that without causing any real damage to the board. There we go. So there we have it. That's our little board trimmed and to where it should be. So we've got a nice little, a nice little AY sound module there at that. And I've prepared a little piece of cardboard here that should sit on the back of it, of a little pack of biscuits. So that guy should sit over the back here. Then what I'm do is I'm going to test it just with the processor in for the moment and uh, not with any of the other chips and we'll see how it goes. So let's get over to the spectrum and see what happens. Now, okay, so before I get started uh, on installing the AY chip or any of that, or before I open up the Leningrad, what I want to do first is just make sure it's working normally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a game here called Elixir Vital, which uh, is supposed to work with the AY sound chip. So we'll see what it does before, and we'll see what it does if everything keeps functioning after I've put in the module. So we load it up just with the, the regular load and our two 
inverted commas and I press play here and it should load up. Now, so there we go, it's after loading up. So what I'll do is I will select the Sinclair joystick and we'll select start game. So the game appears to be working fine, but you see every time there's a sound made, the sound is coming from the speaker in here and there's flashing all over the screen and there's a band of colored lines here across the bottom as well. And I believe that to be um, some of the signals that are supposed to go to the AY sound chip the way this system is set up, uh, they're obviously not, they're going to the processor and we, we get this kind of um, interference and whatever. The game is playable, everything is fine, but um, there are these little, uh, these little glitchy problems. So what I do is I'll reset the system, I will power it down, I'll open it up, um, we'll take out the processor, we'll pop in the the module there, the AY module, and we will put just the processor into it. We won't put in any logic chips or the AY chip just yet. And we'll just see that it functions. And if it functions that far along, we'll power it down again, we'll put in the remaining chips that it needs, power it up and see if we can load up this and maybe get some music out of it. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that there now. See if I can show you a little bit more better. So yeah, okay, so here we are. This here is the um, is the Leningrad motherboard, and I've got my two ROM chips here, and this here is the processor. So this is the guy we're going to be removing, and our module is going to sit in on top of that. And then once we've set our module in, this guy will sit back in on top, and we'll power it up at that and see does it work or not. It clicks from the keyboard. Are coming through the speakers so that that's a very good sign i would imagine okay, my my understanding of this is there's nothing more to be done with it when this loads up it should play music through the speakers and that's all this to it uh, there's nothing more needs to be done there's nothing needs to be selected everything is in place everything should be working that's pretty much that, so we'll see. It's made no difference at all. Now, You hear that? That there is the reason why you should never give up hope on these things. Okay, so I think we'll all agree that it's a bitch. When you've spent hours and hours and hours working on something and the damn thing just will not work. But the feeling of elation and joy is humongous once it does. And I would love to say that I'm a genius and I know all about electronics and that's the reason that this little board here is now working. But that's not the case. No, I was very obstinate and I bashed my head against a brick wall until the damn thing worked for me. So what was wrong with it? Well, as you saw, that was last Saturday when I was trying to get it to work for the very first time and I had no luck whatsoever. Uh, that afternoon, I checked for continuity all over the board and I found that there was one short there was one little short between two pins on a logic chip. And well, I removed that short and I retested thinking that everything would be fine. And guess what? It wasn't. It still was behaving in exactly the same way. So I used my little mini pro programmer here to verify that the 74 series logic chips, the three of them on the board, were working correctly. And they were. So I had eliminated those as possible faults. Also, the Zilog, or the Sharp Z80 processor that I was using, well, it's been working fine for years inside of this system, so I knew that was good. So, it was kind of falling back on the AY sound chip that I had, the 8910, and I thought maybe there was a problem with the, with the clock frequency or something, because I know that 
The side log is running at 3.5 megahertz and the A white chip takes its clock signal from that but it can't run any higher than 2 megahertz so there is a 7474 logic chip in there that's used to tone down that 3.5 to 1.75 megahertz. I thought maybe there was a problem with that but I scoped around and probed around and no there wasn't. So it kept coming back to the 8910, the A white chip. I got my MSX, the Canon V20, and I took that apart. And lo and behold, it's not a AY sound chip, but it's an equivalent that was in it. I can't off the top of my head remember what it was now exactly. But um, I spent about two hours removing that chip because it wasn't socketed. And I eventually got it out. I put a socket in so that I could check my AY chips. And I popped in the first one and I tried it out. So I just did a very basic little test. I know that with the MSX, every time you tap on the keyboard, you'll get a little bip every time you tap a key. Now, that's normal and all the rest, but if you put in the beep command, you'll get a much higher pitched beep when you press enter. And that wasn't happening with the AY chips. So that's what was wrong. There was a short and I had two faulty AY sound chips. Now, did the short, or was the short responsible for the AY sound chips? not working it's possible I don't know but um I don't know either I've sold two dud chips or I'm responsible for having blown them up myself I do not know but anyway they were cheap enough so I'm not too concerned about it um but there you go so now that it's all working and all the rest I will show you properly with camera much closer uh, how we install it and how it works okay so here we are this is my spectrum opened up and this here is little Yamaha soundboard or little AY soundboard that I'm going to install into it. So the Spectrum has been completely unplugged. There's no power going into it, I say Spectrum. I mean, of course, Leningrad. And um, i just move this over to one side so that we can see what we're about. Now, so the first thing to do is to remove the processor, which is here. So I'll get a little tool with which to do that. And to remove my little processor here now, if I can do it without my arms and all getting in the way of the camera. So this guy will slide in under here and I can just, way there we go, processor out. <laughs> now, just readjust those little legs that got a little bent. But um, our processor will sit into this here uh, with pin one going to pin one and whatnot. So it'll sit in like this here. Now, and we just push it down into place, being careful not to bend any of the pins on the bottom. This guy here is going to sit in here. So I need to get it in so that, um, again, the pins are going into the correct holes in the sockets and once I've got it aligned, I just push it firmly into place. The next thing to do is we're going to plug our speakers in here. Now, so there is an internal speaker on this guy, this guy here. Now, this is pretty much entirely replaced uh, by this soundboard. So really, you can remove it. Because what will happen is when using a lot of the AY software, AY compatible software, it will spit out sound that really shouldn't be there. And uh, the board will be given out the correct sound, but this guy will be given out some kind of interpretation of what it thinks it should be, which is miles away from what it should be. So um, that guy can be removed and uh, this will be a replacement for it. So that's it. That's the board installed. We've got our speakers connected. We've got it in place. So now all we have to do is to turn on the uh, the Leningrad here and see that it powers up. So I'll turn on turn down the volume a bit to get rid of that buzzer. There we go. So when I press on the keyboard, I'm hearing clicking coming out through these speakers. See now. That clicking actually happens even if the AY chip isn't installed because it's like a pass-through 
uh, for the speakers. So you'll get all the speaker sound and all the rest from this little card that I've installed, even if, even if you don't have an AY sound chip in it. But um, as we have the AY sound chip in, we also have the added benefit of all the lovely AY soundy stuff. So we load up a game using that. Actually, I'll load up a little demo using that. So I'm going to load up the Antares demo. Antares 2. Which is a, a little demo made by, I suppose, the Spectrum scene or whatever. But it does two things. It does both speaker, so speaker music, and or your beep demo, and also the AY sound uh, end of it too. So uh, we can try both. And you'll see what's what. Now, so it's with the haunting melodies of Antares Du, I will bid you adieu. So I managed to do the first of the three upgrades that I had spoken about for this Leningrad board. We've got an AY sound chip, or an equivalent chip, uh, controlling the sound and music now. And uh, it seems to be working quite well. Everything I've thrown at it so far, it has been able to play. And uh, I've done a comparison of these demos on YouTube with what other people have and it sounds exactly the same. So that's a very good thing. Uh, the next upgrade that I'll be looking at doing is taking this from 48K up to 128K system. Now, it's a much harder upgrade because we'll be removing the board and we'll be working on the board itself. There's a lot of traces to be cut. There's a lot of wares to be added. And there are, I believe, 15 chips that are going to be added to the board. There are eight more memory chips that are going to sit in a piggyback configuration on top of the eight memory chips that are already in this board. And then there are seven memory control chips that are going to sit on various chips around the board as well. And they're all going to be wired together. So, um, like I say, it's going to be a big job. It, um, there's a lot of potential for blowing the thing up. So I want to leave a little while and profit, make the most from what I have achieved here and use it a bit and get a little bit of fun of it and enjoyment out of it just in case I do blow it up trying to do that upgrade. But um, between this and then, there is one other little thing that needs to be done. The, um, the ROM on this is the 48K Spectrum ROM and that's a 16K ROM but on this board it's shared across two 8KB chips. Now in order to do the memory upgrade I'm going to have to put the ROM for the plus two onto this guy. And in order to do that, I need to put it onto one sixteen kilobyte ROM chip. So I need to modify the board in such a way that it will take a single sixteen kilobyte ROM chip instead of two eight kilobyte ROM chips. So uh, that's what that that's what the next video will be. I think on this, not necessarily the next video. The next video on this. Um. Yeah. So look, I'm droning on at this stage. If you like the video, give a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Uh, share it, let people know about it if they're into this kind of thing, or even if they're not, let them know about it. If you haven't subscribed already, then do, do subscribe, and um, yeah, there'll be plenty more stuff like this coming. We'll see what I can do. <laughs> so, until next time, everyone, take very good care of yourselves, and talk to you all soon. Bye bye.